Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker-puffed wheat and Quaker-puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Did you get that hurry-up signal, fellas and girls? This is the last, the very last day on this program we can offer you a sensational Sergeant Preston mounted police whistle. Have pencil and paper ready. Be sure to hear today how to get for yourself the official two-toned kind of police whistle that Sergeant Preston always carries. It's offered only by delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Stay glued to your radio for details. Young Corey Lane slammed the door of Matt Deacon's cabin angrily and started trudging down the main street toward the center of town. The wind-driven snow bit deep into his cheeks and he welcomed the sting. Ann Howard, who owned the Beaver City restaurant, lived next door to Matt. And as Corey passed her door, he thought of stopping. Then he rejected the idea. He wanted to be alone in his disappointment. Bobby. Suddenly he heard his name called. He turned back. Matt Deacon was standing in the open doorway of his cabin. A shot rang out. Matt clutched at the air and then slumped to the threshold. The door of Ann's cabin opened. Who's there? It's Corey, Ann. I thought I heard a shot. You did. Look. It's Matt. Didn't you shoot him? Oh, no. I don't know where the shot came from. Across the street, I, I didn't see anybody. Is he dead? I'll go see him. He's dead, all right. Are you sure? Absolutely. Oh, listen. Listen, they've heard the shot downtown and they're coming from the cafes. Corey, you can't stay here. Why not? Because you'll be blamed. Come with me to my place. What's the sense? Don't argue. Just come on. All right. I'll put out the lamp. What's the idea, Anne? Matt Deacon has been murdered. I know that, and but... And you'll st- be accused of it. Huh? I heard you talking with Hugh Mason, Matt's partner in the restaurant today. And a lot of other people must have heard you. Well? Deacon and Mason, you owe them money. Your claim is up as security and your note's due in a day or two. You came into town to get an extended and Hugh told you that Matt handled all such matters. That he'd be back from Dawson tonight and you could see him in his cabin. Matt refused to give you any more time. How do you know that? Oh, the nature of the beast. He wants your claim. Yeah. It's true. He did refuse. Too many people know that you plan to see Matt tonight, and when they find him dead, what? Well, listen to I them. was outside your door when the shot was fired. You saw me. I didn't have any gun. You can tell them. They'd say I was lying to protect you. Now, I would too, Corey. Oh, Anne. But the best way is not to have to lie. Now, get out of here and go back to the palace, to your room. And deny that I was ever here? What's that but lying? Refuse to say anything. You can't do that. All right, then, lie. Oh, say that you decided to see Matt in the morning instead of tonight. No. They're one of the men. They want to know if you saw anybody. Oh, go out through the kitchen, out the back way. Now, hurry. <laughs> All right. And? Who is it? Kate Corby. Let me in. Uh, no, I I haven't finished dressing. Oh, please let me in. It's important. It's about Corey. Well, All right. Now, what about Corey? Matt Deacon has been murdered. Oh, so that's what the shot was. Well, what does it have to do with Corey? Well, he came to see Matt tonight. I thought he might have stopped here. They're saying. I don't he... care what they're saying. You I haven't have seen. Don't start lying yet, but... Ann. Not to Keg. Corey. Why haven't you gone? Keg's an old friend. You don't have to worry about him. Corey, 
You didn't do it. Oh, of course not. The rest of the town will never believe that. I've been trying to persuade him to go back to his hotel room before it's too late. Then when they go after him, let him find him in bed. She's right. There are too many people around. Not in back, and you'll never be seen in this door. You can make it all right. Oh, please, Corey. Please, for my sake. Oh, it's someone else. Now, get out of here, both of you. Come on, Corey. All right. As Sergeant Preston and Constable Downey drove into town, they were attracted by the crowd in front of Matt Deacon's cabin and headed straight for it. Looking! Hello, Husky! Hello! Sergeant Preston, there's been a murder! Sergeant, somebody shot Matt Deacon. Kill Come him. on, Jim. Right with him. Inside the cabin, the body had been placed on a cot. Doc Forrest had finished his examination and was talking to Hugh Mason as the sergeant and the constable entered. Well... Sergeant Preston. Hello, Mason. How are you, Doc? Sergeant. This is Constable Downey. How do you do? Doctor. It's a sad business, Sergeant. How did it happen? We found him lying in the doorway. I was playing poke at the El Dorado when we heard the shot. We all came running. Doc was the first one to get here. That's right, Sergeant. He was dead when I examined him. Bullet entered his left side and pierced the heart. And he wasn't able to say anything? No, Sergeant. Any idea who did it? Well, there was no one around, but with the darkness and the storm, it would have been a simple matter for the killer to make his getaway before I arrived. You saw no one? No, Sergeant. I'm offering a $1,000 reward. Are you? Matt was my partner. And no sneaking coyote's going to do a thing like this and live to brag about it. The money goes to you, Sergeant. The Northwest you... Mounted doesn't accept rewards. Then it goes to anyone with information that'll lead to the killer's arrest. Maybe I can earn it myself. Huh? What do you mean? Corey Lane. He had a note coming due. What about it? Well, we had supper together tonight. He wanted to talk to me about it, but I told him that Matt handled all our loans. That I expected him back from Dawson this evening. That Corey could discuss the matter with him here. That all? Corey was anxious to see him tonight. Wanted to head back for Wishbone Creek the first thing in the morning. You believe that Corey killed him? I don't say that, but I happen to know that Matt never renews a note. Corey stood to lose his claim. And you believe that he had a motive for killing him? It's up to you to decide, Sergeant. Yeah, thanks for the information. Is that desk locked? No, I, I don't know. No. If you don't mind, gentlemen, the constable and I would like to go through Matt's papers. Well, aren't you going to ask Corey any questions? Later. Now, if you don't mind... Sure, sure. Let's go, Doc. During the next half hour, the sergeant and the constable made a thorough examination of the cabin and the contents of Matt Deacon's desk. When they left the cabin, there was still a crowd out in front. And Hugh Mason hurried to the sergeant's side. Going after Corey, Sergeant. Where's he staying? The hotel, the palace. I'll show you. No, All right. Come on, man. Let's go with you. All the men followed the sergeant to the hotel. But he asked them to wait in the lobby. And he and the constable climbed the stairs alone. Corey was in room 204. Yes? Sergeant Preston and Constable Downey, Northwest Mounted Police. You're Corey Lane? That's right. May we come in? Why, sure. Uh, better leave the door open till I light the lamp. All right. What's on your mind, Sergeant? Did we wake you up? No, no, I, I just gone to bed. You been out tonight? Well, I, uh, I had supper at Ann Howard's place. I... I came back here afterwards. When was that? Uh, about seven. You stayed here? Why, uh, yes. Take a look at these, Sergeant. Your mucklucks, Corey? Yeah. They're wet. There's a piece of ice here that hasn't melted yet. So you have been out since supper? Why, yes. Did you go to Matt Deacon's cabin? All right, I did, but I didn't kill him. Do you have a gun? I didn't when I was there. I, I've got one in my knapsack. I'd like to see it, Corey. Yeah, it's, it's in here. Was it here? I never took it out at all. It. It's gone. Yeah. What was it? Thirty-eight revolver. Had my initial scratched on the butt. You think I used it and then threw it away? Why would I tell you I had a gun if I didn't think it was here? Sit down, Sergeant. I... Sit down. That's better. Does Matt refuse to extend your note? I still have two days. I was going to try and borrow the money. He refused. Yes, but I didn't kill him. I'd left. Ann Howard lives next door. I was in front of her cab when I heard Matt call to me. He called to you by name? By name. Corey. Not Lane. Oh, Corey. I turned around, and just as I did, I heard a shot, and Matt dropped. 
Anne will tell you that I was standing in front of her door then. She opened it as soon as she heard the shot. She'll tell you that I didn't have a gun. Corey, you had the motive to commit this murder, and you had the opportunity. How could I without But a... neither Constable Downey nor I believe you did it. Huh? We believe it was planned before tonight, and that you were elected to take the blame for it. I was elected? By whom? Well, that we must find out. For the time being, we'll let people think you're our principal suspect. Let the real criminals think they've succeeded in their plan. Are you arresting me? No, Corey. But I want you to take this whistle. Yes, sir. The constable and I intend to stay close to you from now on. If for any reason you need our help, blow that whistle. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Going! Going! Your last chance is almost gone, fellas and girls. Yes, today is the very last time on this program you'll hear how to get a thrilling Sergeant Preston mounted police whistle. A whistle that's a 14-carat gold-plated copy of the very whistle that Sergeant Preston always carried. And that saved his life time and time again. You can't buy this sensational whistle anywhere, in any store. It's offered only by delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. The famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereal shot from gun. <laughs> Wait till you see what a beauty of a whistle it is. Gleaming 14-carat gold-plated with a cord attached of gold-colored braided nylon. And what a big He-Man whistle it is. Actually, over three and one-half inches long. It's not a toy by a long shot. It's of heavy-duty metal. It feels heavy. It is heavy. It's not an ordinary single-tone whistle. It's an official two-toned police whistle. Now, this is the last day we can tell you how to get it. So, listen carefully. Buy a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. The bigger, better tasting cereal that's shot from guns. And full of bang up nut like flavor. Then send the box top with only 35 cents. That's 35 cents. And your name and address to Yukon, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. And with this money-back guarantee, you can't lose. Hold this Sergeant Preston-mounted police whistle in your hand. Blow it just once. And if it isn't a better, far better whistle than you've ever heard or seen, you may return it and get every cent of your money back, plus postage. Act now. This is absolutely the last day of this radio offer. Send your 35 cents and one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice to Yukon, Y-U-K-O-N, Yukon, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue. When the sergeant and the constable returned to the lobby, it was still crowded, and Hugh Mason was leading the discussion. Of course I'll pay after all, Matt was my partner. The least that I can do to bring the criminal to justice. Talk to the clerk, Jim. Want to stay. Get a room as close as you there can you to Corey's. Right. Well, Sergeant, what did he say? At first, he said that he hadn't left his room this evening. That's a lie. He admitted it later. He went to see Matt. Did you arrest him? No. Well, why not? Because I don't have enough evidence for that. But if you don't lock him up or something, you'll try to escape. Well, that would prove he was guilty, wouldn't it? He wouldn't get far, Mason, and sometimes it's a wise thing to give a man enough rope. Oh, enough rope to hang himself, huh? Uh -huh. Maybe you're right. Gentlemen, I'd advise you all to go home. I intend to conduct a complete investigation tomorrow morning. Don't forget, fellas, a thousand dollars to anyone. What's vacant, Jim? In 205, the room next door. Good. There's only one cot, but I'll have another one put in. Fine. Oh, uh, and clerk. Uh, Yes, sir. If anyone should ask where we're staying... Oh, uh, I understand, sir. The constable warned me. If anyone asks, you're on the third floor. Nearly all the men in town adjourned to the El Dorado Cafe after they left the hotel. Keg was standing at the bar talking with Hank Travers when Hugh Mason walked up to them. Keg, we got things to talk over. I'll say we have. Follow me in the back room. You too, Hank. All right. What's the idea of making yourself so all-fired important, Hugh? Why did you have to offer that reward? It was the natural thing to do. Sure. 
because it's the natural thing for a guy to think of his own skin first. I don't have to protest my innocence. I have 50 witnesses to prove that I was at the El Dorado when Matt was killed. Well, I was there, too. So if the case against Corey doesn't hold up and the sergeant starts looking for someone else, I'll be the one to... Take person. it easy, Keg. If you were arrested, you'd be sure to implicate me. You can depend on it. We must make sure that Corey is convicted. He will be. All the evidence is against him. I don't know. There's Anne. The sergeant hasn't talked to her yet. Her story will be in Corey's favor. She might be able to convince the sergeant he had nothing to do with the shooting. We won't right? give it a chance. Hey, you're not suggesting... No, no, no. Now listen to me, both of you. The sergeant is practically convinced that Corey is guilty. You heard what he said. The only reason he didn't arrest him is that he doesn't have enough evidence right now. He's given him enough rope. You heard him? Enough rope. Well? One false move, and Corey will be through. Mm. What do you got in mind? We'll persuade him to get out of town. That's impossible. You could do it. His good friend, his pal, who's only thinking of his welfare. No, no, it isn't good enough. I haven't finished. I need an argument, something that will, will panic him, make him want to run. There isn't anything. You're wrong. You still have his gun, haven't you? Yeah, there's no chance of getting it back in his room. That's a good thing there wasn't. Let's see it. Here. You haven't cleaned it or anything? No. One shot fired and his initials on the handle. Hmm? Here's the story. Hank, you and a couple of other guys were looking around in the gully in back of Matt's cabin. You found this gun, you picked it up. It was long after midnight when Corey was awakened by a stealthy knocking at his door. Who is it? Keg. What's the matter? Let me in. There was someone out there with you. It's Hank Travers. He's found your gun. Where? In a gully back of Matt's cabin. My gun was stolen. Whatever you say, Corey, but it's going to look mighty bad if he turns it over to the police. He knew I was a friend of yours, and he came to me first. It, it's a break. What does he want? Well, he'll tell you, but let me handle it. All right. Come in, Hank. Uh, hi, Corey. So you found my gun. Yeah. I think maybe you stole it and used it to kill Matt. You're loco. There were a couple of other guys with me when I found it. In the gully back of Matt's. One shot fired. Where is it? Well, I haven't got it with me. So what do you want? Well, it's this way, Corey. Matt was as mean as he come. He deserved what he got. And I wouldn't like to see you hang for it. Thanks. But your initials are on the gun. And if I give it to Sergeant Preston, it would just about cinch a case against you. I'd collect a thousand dollars from Hugh Mason. So that's it, huh? I'll uh, sell it to you for 500 I'm not interested. Don't pay any attention to him, Hank. Of course he's interested. If I had $500, I'd have paid off my note. We'll get it, Hank. I'll go on home. We'll see you in the morning. You'd better make it early. Keg, there's no way I can raise $500 by morning. And even if I could... I know, I, I know. Besides... I was only stalling. Only one thing left to do. What's that? Get out of here. Run away? You're sunk if you don't. Lucky it's still snowing. There won't be any tracks to follow. I can take you to a place where you can hide out for a month if necessary. No one will ever find you. And after they stop looking, I'll see that you get across the border. I don't want to run away. Besides, there's no sense no to sense. it. No sense? You were at the cabin. You had a fight with Matt. They find your gun with one shot fired from it in the gully in back of the cabin. With that kind of evidence against you, there isn't a jury in the world who wouldn't find you guilty. I didn't do it. Well, I believe that. No one else will. The sergeant believes I'm innocent, too. Oh, at least he Listen, said... Listen, he came downstairs and told Mason he was giving you enough rope to hang yourself. But, what? That's what he believes. To hang myself? I heard him. I'll go on, get dressed. I'll meet you out and back with my dog team in ten minutes. For a moment, Corey stood irresolute. Enough rope to hang myself. <laughs> and giving me that whistle... In case I needed him. Swiftly, he began to dress. <laughs> As he slipped into his parka, he saw the whistle lying on the table and, without understanding the impulse, put it in his pocket. Then he left the room. Keg was waiting in back of the hotel. Climb on board. Where are we going? We cut through the forest to Galloway Creek. What's there? Your hideout. The old Polar Star Mine. Uh, Let's go. Hush! Right, Hush on! Go. The team had hardly disappeared in the storm when the sergeant and the constable stepped out the back entrance of the hotel and hurried to the run where King and the other members of the sergeant's team had been sleeping. Find them, King, fast. 
It took only a few minutes to harness the team. The tracks aren't covered yet. No. There's the trail, King. Follow it. Quiet, boy. You'll have to keep the team quiet. All set, Jim? All set. Go on, King. Horn, boy. Keg drove his team hard over the drifted trail through the forest, up and over Windy Ridge, and then down the far side to Gonaway Creek. At the head of the creek, they stopped in front of the entrance to the old Polar Star Mine. Oh, 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 oh. Keg. What's the matter? There's a sled. Those are dogs burrowed in the snow. Yeah. There's somebody here already. We've got to find some other place. This'll do, Corey. Go on inside. Keg, okay, what's the idea of the gun? It's your gun, Corey. Is that explanation enough? No. It should be. I'll get going. Light this lantern. Give it to me. Now march. With his own gun pressed into the small of his back, Corey was forced to walk into the mine. When the end of the main shaft was reached, Keg issued a command. To the left. Now Corey could see a faint glimmer of light ahead of him. As he neared it, he realized that it came from beneath a door. Don't bother to knock, Corey. We're expected. Go on, open the door. Beyond the door, there was a room, evidently used at one time to store tools. Inside were Hugh Mason and Hank Travers. Keg, what have you done? Why have you brought me here? Shall we tell him? Of course. We're helping Sergeant Preston. He told us that if you ran away, it would prove that you were guilty. Why, Keg? I thought you were my friend. Anybody can make a mistake. It sure must have been stupid to make that one, though. The only thing Keg likes about you is your girl. What are you going to do with me? We've been considering that, Corey. I'm afraid there's only one answer. We can't just leave you here. You'd head straight back for town and tell the sergeant you'd been kidnapped. We could tie you up and leave him. Cold would finish you off, but the surest way is a bullet. Let him have it, Keg. Not me. I've done enough killing for one what? night. You? You are stupid. You thought Matt called after you just before he was shot. He didn't. He didn't say Corey. He said Corby. He saw me. Why? That question is getting a little monotonous, especially since we have no intention of answering it. Shoot him, Hank. Not me. My cut isn't big enough to include murder. All right, then. Let me have his gun, Keg. May as well make it look like suicide just in case he's ever found. Here. As Corey watched Keg hand the revolver to Hugh, his hand closed on the sergeant's whistle. Almost absent-mindedly, he put it to his lips and blew. Hey, what the... A whistle. Let me see that. School. There's a name engraved on it. Let's see. Sergeant Preston. Where did you get this? He gave it to me. He told me my life was in danger. If I ever needed his help, I was to use it. I waited a little too long. He told you your life was in danger. And that he didn't believe I killed Matt. Keg persuaded me he was lying. My friend. Now, this changes things. How does it? He suspects us. How could he? And what good would it do him if he did? Corey's the only one who could prove anything, and he's through. Hey, what's the matter with this gun? You hit the empty chamber. Ah, ah now I've got it. Now. Oh, is hey. right. Drop that gun, Mason. Sergeant Preston. Why, you... Oh. Anyone else oh. like to trade shots? Oh. Evidently not. Get their guns, Jim. Oh. I'll get them. Sergeant, how? When I blew that whistle, I We were I just entering the... the mine. We got here as fast as we could. But how did you know? The constable and I were in 205. There's a knot hole in the petition. We heard everything you said to Keg and Travers. It was Keg who shot Matt. You suspected him all along? No, Corey. Not until he persuaded you to leave town. The man we suspected was Hugh Mason. Why? Hugh was Matt's partner. And used his position to steal money from him. Matt had all the proof, and he showed it to us in Dawson. I came here to arrest Mason for embezzlement. You'd better bandage his arm, Jim. I will, sir. He must have known that Matt was on to him, and he stood to gain more than anyone else by Matt's death. Not only safety from prosecution, but according to their partnership agreement, all the firm's property went to the surviving partner in case of death. Safety and wealth. It was a great temptation. And you were right, Sergeant. Except that it was Keg who actually fired the shot. He hired Keg and Travis to help him. Well, your testimony, we can prove it. Now let's get started back to town. Oh, uh, here's your whistle, Sergeant. You handle it as if it were worth a million dollars. Or whatever a man's life is worth, it saved mine. I'm glad, Corey. Come on, King. This case is closed. (laughs) 
In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure, A Friend in Need. Last chance, fellas and girls. This is your very last chance on this program to hear how to get a Sergeant Preston mounted police whistle of your very own. A genuine 14-carat gold-plated copy of Sergeant Preston's own mounted police whistle. And with it, you get a 12-inch gold-colored braided nylon cord. You can hang it from your buttonhole or belt for any emergency. To signal your pals when you're on a tight spot. To use on patrol on dark nights. And it's perfect to call and train your dog. Remember, this is not a cheap toy whistle of tin or plastic. It's a big three-and-a-half-inch whistle of heavy-duty metal. So hurry, hurry, hurry. Send 35 cents. That's 35 cents with your name and address and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. The swell-tasting, crisp, fresh cereal shot from guns. Send to Yukon, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Yukon, Y-U-K-O-N, Yukon. Now, this is absolutely the last time on this program we can tell you how to get a 14-carat gold-plated Sergeant Preston mounted police whistle. So listen and get this for sure. Send only 35 cents and one box top from Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice to Yukon, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Yukon... Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. And now, here's Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting, sir. Oh, yes, Sergeant. A man named Kelma was arrested last week for embezzling money from the bank down in Whitehorse. At the time of his arrest, he swore to get revenge on the bank manager for turning him into the police. Oh, yes, sir. I read the report on that case. Well, I've just had word that Kelma has escaped from the constable who was bringing him here to Dawson City. He may head back to Whitehorse and try to get the bank manager. I want you to track him down, Sergeant, before he gets a chance to carry out his threat. Right, sir. I'll start immediately. Let's go, King. (coughs) Yes, it's up to Sergeant Preston to capture an escaped criminal before he can get revenge on the man who had him arrested. One thing is certain... He won't be taken without a desperate fight. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from gum. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.